immediate question now becomes, will former officer Derek Chauvin be convicted of killing George Floyd after three weeks of witness testimony, expert testimony, both sides have rested their cases. Closing arguments are all wrapped up. Ultimately, it really isn't that complicated uh, in, in what it is you have to decide with respect to the excessive use of force and uh, the issue of causation. The fact that it's so simple that a child could understand it. The state has failed to prove its case beyond a reasonable doubt. And therefore, Mr. Chauvin should be found not guilty of all counts. Now remember, beyond a reasonable doubt is a very tall order, and it should be. So for his legal opinion on this case, I want to bring in Professor Emeritus at Harvard Law and Newsmax contributor Alan Dershowitz, also with us, former White House advisor for the Trump administration and host of the new Newsmax show, the Gorka Reality Check, our good friend, Dr. Sebastian Gorka. Dr. G, Professor, both of you uh, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you, Rob. So, uh, Professor, let me start with you. I know you got to watch a lot of this trial. We've talked about it all over the weeks. What do you think the outcome is going to be here? Can you make a prediction of where this thing may be headed? Well, first of all, the judge should have granted the motion for a mistrial based on the efforts of Congresswoman Waters to influence the jury. Her message was clearly intended to get to the jury. If you acquit or if you find a charge less than murder, we will burn down your buildings. We will burn down your businesses. We will attack you. Uh, we will do what happened to the witness, uh, blood on their door. This was an attempt to intimidate the jury. It's borrowed precisely from the Ku Klux Klan of the 1930s and 1920s, when the Klan would march outside of courthouses and threaten all kinds of reprisals if the jury ever dared convict a white person or acquit a black person. And so efforts to intimidate a jury should result in a mistrial. But the judge, of course, wouldn't grant the mistrial because then he'd be responsible for the riots that would ensue, even though it was Waters who was responsible. And so now, if there is a conviction, and I think there will be a conviction, at least on the manslaughter charge, the issue will go to the Court of Appeals. And will the Court of Appeals have the courage to reverse this conviction on the ground? There are many grounds of appeal, but on the ground that the jury was subjected to intimidation tactics not only by Waters, but by others as well, who threatened violence in the event of, a, of an acquittal or a lesser charge than, than murder. All right, I want to get back to some of the legal issues of the case with you, Professor. But, Dr. G, you know, uh, Professor Dershowitz raised a great point here. This is clearly intimidation. How, I mean, I feel for these jurors. They know what's going to happen. They haven't been sequestered. What do you think happens, short of a conviction of, of the greatest charge against him, the, this murder charge? What happens, Dr. G, your prediction? Well, I think Professor Dershowitz is exactly on the money. Uh, we, we have some, and I'm so glad he used the comparison of the Ku Klux Klan. Let's remember that the Ku Klux Klan was an offshoot, the armed wing of the Democrat Party. It was created in the South by Democrats to intimidate, to use violence, and in many cases to murder uh, black Americans. So the, the analogy or the comparison is fully justified. Uh, th this, is, this is an outrage, an utter outrage. A serving congresswoman who's done it before, remember, she did it to us in the Trump administration. She said four years ago, if you see a member of the Trump administration in public, surround them, harass them. This isn't a one-off. This is the normalization of the violence that the Democrat Party approves of. There's only one party in mainstream politics that is normalizing violence, and it is the Democrats. But again, uh, let me just echo what, what the prep professor said. The judge didn't have the courage to do what should have been done. We know that the jury has already been intimidated. Now it's happening from Congress from Maxine Waters, who Nancy Pelosi defended today, defended her incitement. We have, we have the insanity that the former president was charged with incitement to violence by the Democrats, yeah. did nothing of the sort, said march peacefully and patriotically to Congress. We have the Democrats actually inciting violence, and Nancy Pelosi, yeah. the Speaker of the House, endorses that violence. Yeah, this gets back to the hypocrisy we talk about all the time. Uh, Professor Dershowitz, I I've been watching this case fairly closely. 
I can see possibly a manslaughter conviction if you take away all the stuff surrounding this and jurors being afraid to actually rule on the facts rather than what could happen. I could see maybe a manslaughter case, but I think it's hard to get even there if you're ruling just on the facts. What do you think about where it should be if you throw out all the periphery and just go on the facts, Professor? There should not be a second-degree murder charge. The judge should have thrown that out because that requires felony murder, and you can't have a felony murder when the assault is the underlying felony. Otherwise, that eliminates the distinction between degrees of murder because every murder involves assault, so it automatically turns every uh, assault that results in a death into felony murder. So that's a charge that shouldn't have been justified. Third-degree murder requires that you pose a danger to others, meaning people other than the victim. So I think both murder charges should be thrown out. Now, will the jury do that? I don't know. Manslaughter, if the facts are as the prosecution established them, then manslaughter seems appropriate. Causation was established beyond a reasonable doubt, I believe, although it's a close question. And I do think that recklessness was shown. But I don't think anything beyond manslaughter. Now, if there is a manslaughter conviction, there will be riots in the street. There will be. There absolutely will be. And uh, this is, you know, the unbelievable thing about these cases. I actually disagree with the professor. I think with the autopsy report that came in, you've got enough doubt not to say that even negligence caused his death, which is ultimately where you have to get to. But we'll see how the jury plays this out. Gentlemen, I appreciate you both weighing in on this. It'll be uh, very interesting times to come as we, uh, as we move forward here. Yep. Thank you, fellas. I appreciate both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.